Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. You are currently residing in Fox's Ghetto Prison. We'll be playing through up to cycle 21 today, and our objective is going to be we're going to clean up this area a little bit, and the Ghetto Prison is about to get a little less ghetto. I believe this will be a room for more morale. And we may begin drilling into this area over here a little bit to further extend the base. And I might start pressurizing the base. One of the big tips I'll give you, because we're still in the part of the game that I'm familiar with. Like, we haven't reached the part where I don't know what to do after that. When you start each session, just check your stats. So here we're looking at our temperature overlay. I'm looking for abnormal temperature. So over here. This is pretty hot. The way temperature works is it will slowly travel through certain substances. So these rocks are relatively heat absorbent, meaning it takes the temperature a while to make it through there. And some of them are, some can be so heat absorbent that they won't permit the temperature to change. But we can anticipate that there's going to be, it's going to get pretty hot over here. In fact, if I zoom in, I can see that this oxygen, this air is basically in the mid 70s where it's the almost 90 degrees over here. And the, this is just the oxygen level. So the, the typical room area is in the low 80s, and then it goes down to the mid 70s over here. So the it's getting hot, and so we have heat infiltrating over there. But just make sure you're checking through some of these. A lot of this stuff, like this is rather complicated looking, but that's because you can just filter it to make it look a lot nicer. But uh, some of these you don't have to worry as much about, because we don't have them, like decor, not important just yet. But anyways, let's begin. Alright, time to get back to work, slaves. So what are things I need to do? Is add in one of these right here. And I'm also going to change these slightly. I'm going to move these closer inwards like this. And I'm going to turn these into regular tiles. I'm just doing it for aesthetic purposes. Alright, let's move up to medium speed. They are drilling away over here so I can fill in a few gaps that they had. And let me check our... do we have airlocks? Okay, so we do have airlocks. How do I want to do this? So normally I want these blocked off, but I would like the option for these rooms to be open. What I'm going to do is build airlocks here, and then I'm going to lock the doors. I'm going to do it, um... This is also going to become an airlock. As the base gets expanded further, these airlocks will get replaced and turned back into regular doors. But for now, they're going to be airlocks. The reason we're going to build airlocks is because it will trap the oxygen inside. Basically, in order to conserve algae, which is used to power these oxygen diffusers, by basically by trapping the oxygen in our base, we won't have to basically feed oxygen everywhere in the entire world. It'll just be the areas of high pressure, or the areas where we permit the gas to escape, the oxygen gas. It'll make more sense once I get everything built. You'll, you'll get it. Don't worry. It'll make more sense, hopefully, in time. This is also... Wait, let's actually wait on this. Let's let this get completely built before I seal this off. Do we have skills? Yes, we do. Let's continue promoting people. You get level 2 researching for Joe Davis. You get level 2 digging for Kyler. And you get to get your hat promoted, too. How nice is that? Uh, crop tending level 2. More digging. Digging is... You need a lot. There's a lot of digging. And then construction. Construction's really good. Like, once you get to level 3 construction, you build things really fast. The new bronze hat for Joe Davis. The new bronze hat for Kyler. The Pancakes. That's his real nickname. Pan We're gonna call him Pancakes. The new bronze hat for Pancakes. Looks like he hasn't gotten his upgrade yet. There we go. Joseph Bailey with the upgrade to the bronze hat. 
So the reason why we are putting this here, let's also check my priority map. This, I want this to be a 9, because that needs to be done, like, really, oh, this needs to be an 8. This can be a 5. I don't know, that must have accidentally, these got accidentally changed, these doesn't always should have been a 5. We'll make this a 6. If you don't understand, like, what prior, th that's something that you just gain with experience. It's just something that... You'll figure out what priority. So this is so you can see right here. They haven't finished this floor, but I think this spacing is just more aesthetically pleasing. Like the there's a more of an even spacing. It doesn't matter mechanically as long as you have basically created some holes for the the carbon dioxide gas to sink through. It's fine, but you know I, I don't see any reason to not. Oh, okay, so we're gonna watch him plunge, and this is why we have this here. So let's turn on the um, the germ map. Hey, Kyler's just about done. Oh, okay, he didn't put the... Uh, okay, so someone has to go grab the polluted dirt. Grab the polluted dirt. Okay, so he grabbed the polluted dirt. He's carrying it. That's what's on his back right now. He's got 46,000 food poisoning germs, and he's carrying the polluted dirt, which has basically one million food poisoning germs. So what's gonna happen is he's gonna pass through here and he's gonna use this and clean the germs off himself, but not off the uh, the, the dirt. The dirt's gonna stay germy. That's fine though. So now he's gonna put it in here. And now this has germs and he has germs again. This is, I think, where some of the germs we're getting from. Adding, interacting with this gave him germs, which is why we need this here. So he's gonna leave now and wash it off of himself. This character is going to go in and clean this. So the germs have been killed. And now scooping this around is going to put germs on her, I believe. Okay, never mind. Okay. Either way, it was still important to have this here. Because you saw that dumping the crap into here caused germs. This polluted water is going to be going pretty soon. Like, this polluted water, once we seal this area off, this we can dump the polluted. This is So this is our freshwater reservoir. This is going to be our dirty water reservoir. We also can go ahead and start cleaning this area up as well. So we just had to spray this. They're disinfecting this of, um, you can see here, it's these, it's this stuff here. I'm gonna have to drill this stuff away to stop that from happening. But one thing at a time. Let's do this. Let's remove, we're gonna remove two panels at a time so they don't, like, strand themselves. Same thing, another two. Remove that. If you remove it all at once, sometimes there's some really dumb things can happen, like they can, like, get trapped, and then if they get trapped in an area where they can't breathe, you know, oxygen is not included, etc. Okay, we can do this as well. Because we're contained- so remember, we're storing the slime in here. Because the slime can't output its toxic gases down inside the water. That's why we're doing it there. So I think the way it's going to work is, this is going to be the way in. So we'll put the door here. They need, so I'm not going to give them any more orders, because like they, they've got a lot to take care of at the moment. And let's go ahead and speed things up to the max. Okay. So what's going to happen is... Oh wait, I will give them orders here, because we do need the... It's still our goal to clean this area up. So this area is basically... I mean, it's not complete, but it's very close to being done. Oh, that's the end of, uh, the beginning of the end of shift. So if we use our germ overlay again... Okay, so it's not a problem yet, but this polluted water can start to become a problem. Let's check our gas overlay. So the purple gas here is... Let's turn this on to gases. So yeah, here's the polluted oxygen. It's not very much, 
and there's no germs inside of it. Polluted oxygen is basically an environment for germs, but if there's no germs to inhabit the polluted oxygen, then it's not really a problem. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't get rid of it, though. So let's go ahead and speed through the night. Let's be, we'll be creepy and watch them. That's right. A short reprieve before you must get back to work, my minions. Excellent. That's enough of a right. Get back to work! Get back to work! Okay, this is the final one. Yay! It's basically done. I'm gonna destroy both of these because their their positioning is really awkward. Um where do I wanna build this? So the floor would be right here, but we're just gonna cheat and put it right here. I mean we're not cheating or anything, but I just want it above water. Even though this would be the floor and that would be the floor, so it should be two two uh units downwards, but it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so, so we're gonna start dealing with water. I do need a research. I need this right here, these mesh tiles. Mesh tiles are similar to these airflow tiles, but they also allow liquid through. Okay, so they finished building that, so now we can seal this off. And we can seal this off. We can open this. Actually, I, I wanna open it up maybe here. Okay, let's, let's slow down a little bit. Go a little too fast. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so the reason I just canceled that is I don't want them to go in here and start building the ladder and then somebody seal them inside. Okay, now that it's fully built and there's no way for them to trap themselves yet. Oops. Cancel that. Destroy that. Let's have this stay open permanently. What are they doing down here? Also, let's open this up. Um... Oh, this is what I need. I need a pump. I'm gonna put it here. Actually, no, I'm gonna put it here. And I'm gonna begin removing the flooring here. What did we just research? Okay, we got the basics of, uh, the basic water skills. Or the water te basic water technology, the water pump. So that means the next skill should be our mesh tiles. Same thing, we're, we're removing these slowly so that I don't have a some kind of stupid mishap occur. I'm gonna remove this, we're gonna remove that. I'm going to install a wash basin here. Because the same problem is going to emerge when they put the dirty water in here, it's going to have the same issue. Okay. Wait, no, let, let's not... I'm not going to give this any programming just yet. Go ahead and complete some of these. Just so that we, once again, so that we can better visualize what our base is going to look like. Okay. What are you doing down here? Oh, let me guess, you're going to spray one of these? Okay, we need to do stuff. That's gonna start annoying the crap out of me. That is really gonna start annoying me. So, in order to clean that up, we're gonna extend this down. Not that far. Extend this down. We're gonna start building this, because this is gonna be another layer. Are we out of copper? Okay, we're out of copper. So maybe we won't do that just yet.
Let's build this. So this is going to be a ladder. That's going to be a fire pole. This is going to be the next floor. So let's go ahead and 16. Can I make 16? Some polluted oxygen in there. Not a big deal. We're going to drill through this because this is going to give us our copper. Wait, did I do that correctly? Let me let me count. 14. So, yeah, okay, okay. That is 16. Because this is the wall right here. So it should be a total of 17 to accommodate the wall. Or... Did I do that correctly? Let me see. Let me just build the floor in. This is why, this is why you want to do this. It just helps you visualize it better. So the reason we're going to start, we're going to build more rooms, but the other reason we're doing this is simply because we need uh, the copper. We need to mine more copper. So this goes over here, all the way down. Start it, not that far. And even though we're going to dig up some slime, we can put the slime in here, so it's not a big deal. Oh, we should have the mesh tiles now. Wait, why don't we have the mesh tiles? Okay, so the, the research isn't quite done. Let's go to our priority map. Make this an 8, make this a 9. This is going to be specifically polluted water, so this drop-down arrow lets us determine different liquids. There are more than two liquids, and they don't appear until you discover them. So in the beginning, you'll only have water, so be careful. If you set this to water, You'll, put, you'll be, basically be careful as you discover new liquids. So this is going to have them automatically put the liquid in. Which means they should get this and they should dump it in here where it will now be trapped inside our soon-to-be sewer system. Oh, oh, oh. Ice. Farming and cooking. Ranching, doctoring, and decorating. Germ-resistant... Okay, so those are all fine. We don't need this one. So the question is, do I want farming and... I think we already have two people with farming. Let's check our skills. Does anyone else... Can can they learn farming? No. Does anyone learn cooking? Okay, so we actually need this person. So, welcome to... Oh, let's check our names. Time to check our names. Wait, okay. So we've got Joe Davis, Kyler, SVS, Joseph Bailey, and Pancakes. That, that name's too hard for, for... It's too... Oh, it takes too much effort. So welcome to jail. Oh, yes. I'm sure this is exactly what W.T. Reed looks like. I, I've seen what he looks like in real life, and that's exactly how he looks. He's got this kind of, like, bean-shaped torso, you know... For some reason, going bald everywhere except the front of his head and around the sides, you know. That's exactly... And he's a yokel. Everyone knows W.T. Reed is a yokel, but he's very good at interior decorating. He's, uh... He's, uh... An interesting set of skills. So let's go ahead and get him assigned. He's gonna go into farming. Which means I also need to change his... Privileges... Farming. It's okay to have two farmers because it actually takes a while to, like, harvest all of those. Yep, go ahead and clean those up. So, now you can actually see the slime is re releasing polluted oxygen into the air. Let's check our germ map. Now, all of this area is full of slime lung because we have released it. Like, when you destroy a, a... As long as a slime block is intact, the slime germs can move to certain blocks, but it won't enter into the air, even if the block is exposed to air. But once you destroy the slime block, you mine the block, then it will enter into the air. Let's turn on our gas overlay. This polluted oxygen allows slime lung germs to exist within the air, so let's go ahead and put in a deodorizer here. Let's put in a few. We can always deconstruct them later.
I could order... Eh, I, I don't need to do that right now. I could order them to go wash up manually, but it's not that big of a deal. Also, look, we have our, our poopy water is down there. Good. So because this is poopy water... Oh, we can't see the germs, can we? A little bit of germs down there, but not as bad as you'd expect. As you can see, slime lung germs getting everywhere. It's very messy. Like, dealing with slime lung or slime tiles is, is very messy. But we do need to clear it in order to prevent those slime lung tiles from uh, infecting these here. And then it would cause them to constantly need to disinfect them. As you can see, the slime lung is interacting with anything that we touch. It's very hard to just completely get rid of slime lung. Eventually it will die off on its own. But you can see it's basically getting everywhere. Fortunately though, they reduced... So slime lung used to be a deadly condition where it would kill the duplicates if they weren't cured. Now, it just makes them sick and inefficient for a while. And as I said, the key to getting rid of the slime lung permanently is to just keep the area clean. Make sure the area is not full of uh, toxic or polluted oxygen. The slime lung has trouble existing in, like if we go here, the, the germs are going downward. See, it's going down from 6,500. It'll take a few days, but eventually these will all die away. Like this one's dying off much slower or much quicker, but eventually they'll all die off. Why is Kyler stressed? Let me go find Kyler has 1% stress. I mean, 1%'s not a big deal, but is something... Oh, he's hungry. I guess he didn't get a chance to eat. Let's go ahead and fill out the rest of our bathrooms. Because I don't see any harm in that. Good. So here is our meal wood getting harvested. You can cook these, but they can just eat them raw as well. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're just going to eat them raw because they're very efficient when eaten. Like, you, they're not very tasty. I mean, even when they're cooked, they're not too tasty. But basically, there's no need. So let's check our automation. We want to make sure that this guy is not spreading any of our food sickness. So he goes in there. He washes up. Good. He goes down here, and then he washes up. Okay, he's good. So that means that our automation, uh, we've built it in a way where we don't really need to pay attention too much. Let's see, does this get her nasty? No. Okay, they're good. So over here, this guy's got a lot of slime lung on him, probably because he's actually picking the slime up. When he actually physically contacts the slime, that tends to introduce a great deal of slime lung onto you. But if we wanted to, we could just order him over here. And then he would wash up and get the slime lung germs off of the surface of his body. Like so. Very nice. As you can see, dealing with these organic substances like slime lung, they can be a bit of a pain. So over here we have our deodorizers. Let's increase the priority to six to make sure they stay uh, fueled. And let's check our map gas. So notice that all of the these tiles here, the polluted oxygen, and look, you can see the amount of germs. There's about a thousand slime lung germs in it. So we cleaned up this area. There's also the issue that the uh, the carbon dioxide is pushing the oxygen, because remember, it's it's polluted oxygen, specifically. Oh, wait, we can add in the mesh tiles. Let's go ahead and do that. So the mesh tile is useful because it's similar to the airflow tile. Solids can't pass. Gas can pass, but now liquids can pass as well. So when they when they dump the water into here, it will go through that. Why put it here? J just to keep it at the same level so they don't have to go up too many different floors. 
It also means we could put these underwater to create like underwater flooring that doesn't change the height of the water. Like if I started building regular flooring in here, this would take up a whole block. So there's there's uh, one kilogram of, well, there's a thousand, there's water in here. I don't know exactly how much. I don't know. There's a bunch of water in here, and if we put a tile here, it would display, it would push the water out, and that would make the water rise upwards. So you could create a walkway underwater if you wanted to, without adjusting the actual height of the water. What are you doing here? So unfortunately, there's nothing to feed this little guy. He eats tree bark, and we don't even have a tree to plant let alone tree park to feed it. But, um... Well, that's all. Th th there's nothing we can do about that at the moment. Let's go ahead and start adding in doorways to start giving the base a little bit of shape. One, two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Just like that. And we'll go ahead and make these orders to dig this up. So it looks like we didn't get to that by the end of the cycle. That's too bad. I guess, I guess you're just gonna have... This is Fox's ghetto prison. It's just gonna have to stay ghetto. This is not like... I can't think of like a really nice hotel. Oh, we need to change this to left. This, this isn't the Rich Carlton. This is the ghetto prison. So, you know, if you want luxuries, you're going to have to wait. So, I'm going to pause right... Oh, what's where they get to... What's where they get to daytime, we're going to pause, and then we will just... talk about a few ideas before I sign off. Okay. So, this is finally done. Now I can talk a little bit about pressure. So, air cannot travel through these walls. They're solid. Air can travel through this door, but an airlock is a door that when it's shut, it acts like a wall. So, the this all this gas in here is now trapped. If this were a regular door, this air could flow between the two, but this airlock makes it so it's trapped. So now I can lock this. When I choose lock, that basically turns this into a wall. And I can do the same here. The reason I want to lock this is because I don't want anyone to take a dump, and then have their programming decide them to go out the right side and miss the bathrooms. Because that means they'll poop, they'll poop on their hands, and they might go elsewhere. I want them to poop and only go back to the left, which means I could make this a full wall, but in the event I do want to open it for whatever reason, it's just here as an option. It's not a, it's not a really big deal. The same thing goes here. I can remove this and put a, air, a, uh, a manual airlock. And then I will lock it for the same reason, because when they put the poopy water in here and get poop all over themselves, I don't want them to exit over here, because the base could extend out this way, which means they could dump this and say, oh, I've got an errand over here. No, they must go over here. We could design it in a way where we could also put one right here, and then they would be able to exit either way. That That is an option. And that's why we have this here. It's, it, it's an option. But over here, not as much of an option, because I don't want to, like, create some weird path. I, mean, I guess I could put all the outhouses in the middle. But even then, if all four of them went to take a dump at the same time, and then all four of them chose to go the left way, it would mean there would be two here, and two, two sinks would be here, and two sinks would be here, and the four would mean that two of them would use the sink, and then two of them would just ignore it. And so that's not good. So no, I, I, I think this area would just stay shut. So I could just make this a wall if I wanted to, and it, there would be, it would seem pretty logical. I'll give you a hint to all uh, oh, Let's go ahead and add this. So what we're going to be doing on the next episode is I want to research this right here, the mess table, and then I want to research... This right here, the hanging pot. We're going to be putting a bunch of tables here to create a room, specifically a mess hall. And then when we add in the flower pots, it'll become a great hall. So if you look at the bottom, it says morale plus three. 
And this one gives us morale plus six. This is also how you can tell how I choose my bedroom, my uh, my room sizes. The reason it's 16 across is because 16 times four is the standard size. So the, uh, the maximum size of a latrine or a washroom is 64 tiles. And so 16 times four is 64. So it's the biggest room it can possibly be. And you can see this is the biggest room that the latrine can possibly be. And it fits all of these perfectly. It fits them all just right. I mean, technically, there's this right, this uh, there's this area right here that isn't uh, being used, but I mean, technically, we could add some decorations or something in there. But I also just like the the tallest buildings are also four units tall, so that's why the buildings are four units tall. And when you're choosing your sixteen by four area, you want to include the walls that surround it, and any transportation, and then the neighboring wall. So over here. It would be, this would be the ladder, like, let me, let me put this in. This would be the ladder. This would be the fire pole. This would be the door. Okay, well, the muckroot is in the way. This would be the door. This would be the flooring. And, like, that's how, basically, you could do it. You could also just extend another room. You could also just do something like this. And just have another room go out. That's also an option. You could start the next room right here. There's nothing wrong with that. You could do that. I just like the ability to have the duplicates go up and down. Like, add as much verticality options as possible. That's the way I like to do it. There are many ways. You don't even have to build in this kind of, like, prison. Like, so that's why I called it the ghetto prison. Because it's very cell block-like. It's very, very prison-like. It's also very ghetto. But at any rate, that's going to be the end of this episode. We're still in the area of the game where I do know how to play, but don't worry. Once we have to start exploring deeper out over here, deeper over here, especially downwards. I don't have a lot of familiarity with digging downwards into the unknown areas. Once we start doing that, I'll be a lot less familiar with what to do. Then it'll be kind of like navigating a little more in the dark. But hey, that's the end of this episode. Welcoming... Where's WT read it? Where'd he go? Ah, welcome WT Reed into the... Oh, maybe this will be the screenshot. WT Reed joining the party. But until next time, like this video if it was entertaining, subscribe for future Oxygen Not Included content, and of course, remember that you're pretty much just a slave in my ghetto prison. Thank you.